What up guys, it's your boy That's It Zach here and for today's video we're going to be talking about energy systems, how to improve on them, and what the hell does heart rate zones mean. Before we jump into the topic, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell down below so you guys know when my videos do come up. Again, we've got a lot of videos coming up and you want to be informed and see what's happening. But let's jump right into it live. First one, we're gonna talk about ATP PC system, which is your phosphocreatine system. You have your ATP stores that last roughly 0, 0.0 to 2 seconds. Your ATP PC system, which can go up to 10 seconds, and this is mostly called your alactic anaerobic system. You're not gonna be building any lactic acid, and it's the energy that's already stored in your mitochondria, in your cells, the energy that's there, which is ATP. Whatever is there in the reserve, that's what you're using for that sprint. Uh, my teacher used to say something in class where it's like you want to sprint away from that tiger. So whenever that tiger goes, that little energy you have for that like that 10 second sprint, the energy that's there and stored, that's the energy you're using. That's the alactic system. We're not creating any lactic acid. We're not doing anything. We're just using that energy itself and it depletes pretty, pretty quickly. Next. We have our lactic acid that can go up to 60 minutes, under two minutes, and it's your glycolytic. And then that system is pretty much using the reserve that you have within your intracellular glucose glycogen storage. We're using that as energy to complete, let's say a 200, 200 meter sprint, a 400 meter sprint, anything that's gonna be under the two minute range, that's what we're using. And those are pretty much where you see the lactic acid buildup. Which again, guys, lactic acid is not the enemy here. It's the hydrogen atoms that are being produced that are causing that pH change. And lactic acid is actually trying to buffer it. And you can actually use lactic acid as energy to help restore that ATP energy, which is called the Cori cycle. I've done a video on this way back. I'll actually link it up here if you wanna hear the boring drama of how it happens and the Cori cycle and all that. But that video didn't get a lot of views because none of you wanna learn about the science. So. We're not going to dive into it right now, but that's what happened. Lastly, we have over five minutes up to hours and hours and hours of aerobic system. Now this one, we're using oxygen and oxygen is what allows you to work at that sub max level for long periods of time. So we're talking about my, uh, marathon, triathlon. So those are your energy systems. Now, what does heart rate zone have to do with the energy systems? Now, I wanted to add in heart rate zones because I find a lot of people waste their time in the gym and they don't do specific training that's gonna tend to their needs and their niche. And I'm, yes, I'm talking from an athlete's perspective because I am a boxer and I don't find there should be any reason you're in the gym not doing a structured workout and just going in there and wasting your time and doing a whole bunch of junk miles. You're in the gym, you're trying to train, you're trying to get strong, there should be structure to your workout. So if you go in the gym, there should be a reason why you're working a specific zone to target a specific system. And that's pretty much how they correlate. So for me, I used to have a lot of trouble with that intense sprint. So we're talking about my lactic acid, my ATP PC system. So those systems, I used to be very weak in them. And what I would do is three times to four times a week. Again, it's, it went up to four weeks. I never started with that. I started with like one to two times a week and then I brought it up to three. And I would work on those specific system, which would mean my heart rate. Now here are the heart rate zones that I've written down so you guys can get a general picture. 90 to 100, 80 to 90, 70 to 80, 60 to 70 under 60 adls is activities of daily living it's training then i wouldn't be doing 90 to 100 percent max i'd be going down to roughly anywhere between light to moderate which is anywhere between 60 to 80 or 60 to 70 and some people may be like yeah but zach now you're going to be targeting like different uh systems as in carb sources of energy so on 70 percent of your max heart rate you'd be doing more carbs and at 60 or lower, you'd be doing more fat. Yes, that's true, but that's also dependent on how well your body is trained to utilize those sources of energy, right? So if you're more of a keto athlete, a keto athlete will definitely utilizing fat way more efficiently than someone that's more glycolytically carb dependent, right? So it's really just dependent on the person, but the heart rate zones are gonna play into the fact of what you wanna work on. So like I said, as me as an athlete, I needed to work on those energy systems. So when I went in the gym, I targeted that specifically. And then if you want to look at like the whole camp itself, you need some recovery time. You need to go on the lower end of the heart rate. So if you're just going in the gym 
and you're constantly working out at moderate intensity every single workout, you're not getting any benefit at all. You're not progressing, you're not, you're not progressing. You're not progressing, you're not getting any value in your training, you're wasting your fucking time. And <laughs> I don't usually swear on the channel, but it's just to showcase like, you gotta put in the work, like make it specific. So if you're gonna do, go in the gym, have have a plan, have something, you know, I write everything out on my boards. I have like one there, I have four up there, two down there, and I write everything out so I can see it and I make sure that when I go in the gym, I have a plan and I work on those systems. Your anaerobic system plays with how well your body can utilize the ATP energy, right? But if you think about ATP energy, where is it coming from? It's coming from your electron transport chain. And I've done a video on this, and again, it's the boring science that no one wants to hear, but spend the time, go do the research, go read it, or go watch my video. I'll put it up here in the link down below. Go see it, I'm warning you, it's a little boring because it's legit just me talking and drawing diagrams but so you guys can understand the picture. But you have mitochondria cells, I'm sure you guys all know that, they're your powerhouse energy, they're your massive factory, and you have workers in there and you have systems working in there. And if you want the factory to grow, you need more of those workers. So doing aerobic training increases mitochondria density. You get more mitochondrial cells and more density. And within that density, that means you're gonna be able to produce more ATP, more energy, work more and more efficiently at the anaerobic level. So they really work coarsely together. So it makes sense to work on both. So don't skip cardio if you're a bodybuilder. <laughs> like, cause as an athlete, I don't skip cardio. But as a bodybuilder, you might skip cardio and be like, ah, I don't need it. No, it's actually gonna benefit you a lot in your lips. If you have more cells, you're gonna have more energy, you're gonna be able to lift more. That's just one aspect, but just put it into context, right? Make sense of it. Now that you understand how the heart rate zones and the systems work together, now we're gonna go into a little bit how you can improve them, all right? So number one, I just hit it, it was doing more cardio. That's just plain and simple, super easy to do. Do it, it works, right? The next one, I'm gonna fold this up, I'll show you guys. This is a blood vessel, all right? So this is a blood vessel. This is another way you can work on your energy system. So if you take this, this is the diameter of a blood vessel, all right? Now, adding in a way where you can do this and increase the diameter of your blood vessel would be quite interesting to do, right? To increase your ATP energy and utilizations. Well, there is a way and it's with beets, okay? Specifically the nitrates that are in the beets. I did a video on this with those juice when I drank their beet juice uh, juices. I'll put a link up in here so you guys can see more about it. But I also like to use Chrono Bar's beetroot powder extra. They also have that uh, matcha tea beetroot together. So I'm getting the benefits of the nitrates and I'm getting the ECGCs inside of the matcha tea as well since it's like green tea on steroids. And then another thing that I learned in my program, and this is a topic that I'm pretty sure everyone knows, but they don't know exactly how it can correlate together with your energy systems, is omega-3s. Okay, uh, I use the plant-based versions. I've talked about supplementation that I've taken before in my Instagram and in my eight-week cut video. I use um, omega-3, 6, 9, mainly the omega-3s from the protein work. And science has shown by taking the two grams of EPA and by one gram of DHA, you increase the oxygen utilization uh, by increasing the size of the mitochondria and increase ATP that's gonna correlate with the phosphagen that's gonna be circling around because what happens is when ATP is utilized, you create ADP and then the ADP has to attach to a phosphorus, which pretty much comes with phosphocreatine, which is why people take creatine is so that the phosphagen and the creatine can come help the ADP, phosphagen is gonna break off, go to the ADP, is gonna create another ATP, voila, more energy, you're welcome. All right, so, those are ways, a little extra thing you guys can do. If you guys want, uh, you can use my discount down below. Um, it's called Primal Herb, all right? This is um, a company that produces an ATP blend for ATP energy itself. Um, and it contains cordyceps and a whole bunch of other ingredients. You guys can go check the link down, be uh, down below. They don't only make stuff for ATP, they make uh, items for liver detoxification, for hair growth, for skin, for your organs, for your heart, for your bowels. They have a whole bunch of blends 
that are plant-based derived, they're adaptogenic, they're a great company and that's why I like to work with them. What they found, if you look at their, because on their site they have research and they have research for each item and why they like to use that and it's shown that when you implement cordyceps into a into a lifestyle, and cordyceps is just a type of mushroom, just like reishi, chaga, or uh, or lion's mane, ATP production increases by 32% when you implement cordyceps into your daily lifestyle, and it likes to play with the electron transport chain, which I talked about just before this. So that's how they correlate together. So that's like an extra thing you can have and take with you and put in your coffees. It's super simple. Uh, I would definitely use it guys, I like to use it. Anything that helps. Those are the different energy systems, the heart rate zones, the everything. That's it for that video. If you guys can, give this a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Let me know if you liked it, let me know if you didn't like it, just so I know what you guys can feed off of and provide and so I can share everything that you guys need and to improve and live a healthy, healthier, better life. All right? So, it's your boy, that's it Zach. Punch, headbutt, elbow, knee. Peace.